Hi guys. Um, so what I was going to do for you, I might be short and sweet today. I don't know. Um, so I know Easter is coming. We've done a lot of our already like Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's embellishments because we don't do a ton for St. Patrick's Day and, and St. Patty's St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's Day. I was going to say St. Patrick's and St. Patty's Day. Um, so what I figured out was like, you know what, we're just going to start moving on to Easter because Easter orders are already starting to come in anyways. So we're just going to start moving on to Easter. I figured why not just do this cute little carrot wreath attachment embellishment kind of thing. So we're going to do these um, in our shop as like sets of three, but um, I figured I'd do one live with you guys in case you wanted to see. And this is like the softest material. It's like that baby blanket material. Oh, <laughs> I could just sleep on this right on my desk. So we're going to do two versions, which won't be just this um fabric so we have this really soft material and then i have these in the background here that you can see the different versions we're going to make um, not live today but we're, we'll have available so we'll have this one that's kind of like a um more coarse material this is almost feels like you know those really old couches back from like the 70s <laughs> this is what that feels like it's like that couch material <laughs> And, um, and then we have like this striped orange, um, two-tone orange that we're going to do in our shop. And then I really like this one. This one is one that we're going to do live. Um, and I think we're going to do, this is going to be the no sew version. So if you have like two different patterns that you love, um, that you want to combine on your wreath and you're like, oh, I just, I, you know, I don't want my carrot to be all one color. Well, you can make them two colors. Okay. So we have this um, white and black buffalo plaid, and then we have this uh, orange and white polka dot. So, um, so come on in, and if you wouldn't mind spreading the love for Dawn's page, I would really appreciate it to let everyone know um, what you're watching, and uh, make sure that if you haven't already, um, go ahead and follow Dawn's page. So. Um, I have one here that I already kind of started just to show you what it's going to start turning into. Um, so this is the way I cut them out. I think I'm going to end up probably putting these patterns up for everyone on our shop. But so I basically already, this is the sewed version. This material was much easier to do on a sewed version than a glued version, um, just because it's a little bit slippery, the backing of the material. So um, the glue adheres, but it just has a little bit of a tendency to have a little give. So um, I liked this version sewed better because we tested out all of these with sewed and glue. And I think the cotton was the best that I liked glued. Um, and it just probably because of the fibers. So um, this one's already sewed. So it's kind of like in a triangle pattern, um, but there's gonna be room that we wanna leave here excess because what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that um, like pinking kind of look where you get those little, um, almost like those little peaks up and down um, uh, through like either buying like the shears or you can get the rotary cutters, which actually we have a pair of rotary cutters that we ordered and we got to go pick up. I just didn't have a chance to go pick them up. So I'll probably play with those today. So I leave extra room on off of my pattern if I'm doing the pinking method. And these are so easy. Like if you're going to do the pinking method, just slap both sides of the fabric together um, so that the nice fabric side is showing. Okay. And then what you're going to do is sew basically right down the sides and then kind of make one one little point in the middle like a like a basically like an inch and a half um opening so that you can fill and put your stuffing into okay so you're going to want to put your stuffing in there so we're going to start putting our stuffing in here and guys i um i do a lot of plush attachments so not a lot i shouldn't say a lot but like that's a lot meaning like that's mainly what i do so um I tend to buy my stuffing, this fiber fill, in big huge boxes. And again, that's because I do more of these than not. So for me, it's more cost effective. And I know people will say, oh, you know, don't go buy them from like Joann's or Michael's or things like that. But for me, it really is more economical because like if you can catch like one of those 
like 60% off coupons like they usually have at Joann's, then you can get a big huge box for like $18. And that is way, way, way more cost savings than getting like pillows at Walmart for like $3 because that's not even like half the box worth of what you get. So if you do a lot of them, that's what I suggest. If you don't, then yeah, go the pillow route. So I like this. It comes with fiber fill in some uh, packages. If not, get like the end of your paintbrush. Just kind of stick that on in there, okay, to fill it and poke, poke down in there. Um, I like to work with small pieces at a time because if you bunch them up too big, it just gets really bulky and looks like, I don't know, your carrot has like a growth. So we want it to just be nice and sleek. <laughs> um, I love this soft fabric, this minky fabric, because it has like those little raised dots. So it gives the carrot like a little character. And you can totally play around with these because if you want detail in them, and I think one of them we're going to put a face on. So we didn't work on it yet because I think I have to go get some uh, different kind of trim. Because uh, I thought I had black trim that it would work and that didn't happen. So haven't gotten that trim yet. The good thing about this is like when you get to watch other people doing it, it's like you get two for one because A, what I've done is take out like a lot of the um, headaches that you sometimes get with trying to do things for the first time yourself and it's like oh that didn't work throw that piece out oh that didn't work throw that piece out because I do I have like oh, I already threw them in the trash well there's just craft stuff in there but I'm not gonna stick me in the trash um so I think I threw out like six different carrot versions <laughs> I unstuffed them before I threw them in the trash I mean because the fabric itself was no big deal it's very small portion of the fabric but um, you get to learn from other people's mistakes and you get to save on your fabric. So that way you're not tossing things in the garbage, hopefully, unless it was your own boo boo. So that's why it's really cool to watch other people do stuff. Um, I find cause you get to learn from, um, what they feel, um, might work the best. And these were just the most economical way to do it because A, it's just little embellishments. You don't want to be taking six hours to do one embellishment, right? So you want something that's quick, done, easy, but cute. Cute. Cute is the, the main point. Like you don't want it to look like it, right? Oh, we made the hat. Tanya, we made the hats on the left on our last, we made, um, we made this guy on the live Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, so that should be on Dawn's page if you want to watch the replay. And um, I think we have, yeah, the pattern, I was trying to remember when, <laughs> the pattern I think is posted as well on our Etsy shop if you need a pattern and instructions. All right, so this one's stuffed pretty good. Um, I don't want it super stuffed that it's hard. I kind of want it a little squishy. Uh, so what I like to do right now, so see how, like you can see where the bulk of it starts, like it starts getting raised where it's stuffed. Maybe I should zoom you guys in. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in, hold on. So um, see how it starts getting raised? So there's a seam obviously from sewing and then I'll show you the non-sew version right after this. So there's a bigger gap here, probably like about an inch and a half to two inches gap here. And alongside here, there's probably about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. You can go anywhere up to an inch, but you're just wasting material. So the reason I do that is because this material is not very like nice to sew on. <laughs> it just kind of is tough to get through. And if you get really close to the edge, it's, it just kind of slides off because it's so soft. So I was like, I am not going to give myself a headache doing a carrot, all right? So what I like to do then is I'm gonna take these pinking shears. So if you can see, they have like those little teeth-like things on them, all right? These are just for like Walmart. Um, so I'm gonna go really close to the seam, but not cut the seam. Don't cut the seam, because that, that'll be bad. Um, but I'm gonna go really close to the seam, like probably about um, a quarter inch, not even away from the seam. 
And the reason why I got the rotary pinking cutters is because I want to see if this cuts easier with the rotary because this I have to kind of like line up the teeth every time I cut because I'm just a little anal like that I guess. Alright and one thing I forgot to tell you. Alright so that part is done. I like to kind of come up here and just even this off with some straight scissors because this is just from cutting it almost with my eyes closed I guess because <laughs> it's so crooked. <laughs> Looks like I cut it with my eyes closed. <laughs> So I just kind of cut that even and straight because it was whoo, going out of slant. And then we're going to come around to this side and do the same thing. Now just depends on what kind of fabric you're using that these scissors cut easily through two fabric layers or not. I find with this fabric I kind of have to go towards the very beginning of the scissors for it to start cutting. Um, because it's just a little bit more, it's a little bit thicker, I guess. All right. And you can take off like the little fuzzies by doing that. Don't just kind of put your hand on it and wave it around to let the fuzzies fall off. Don't start pulling at it like this because it just creates like ugliness. I'm telling you. I moved forward in the hard way. All right. So. Now you can see that um, your carrot has a nice little neat shape. I know this is still here at the top and that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to also cut through with the pinking shears at the very top now that that's straight. This is like by no means has to be a certain measurement either. Okay, so if you want it shorter you can, but it's just going to be harder to tie the um, wrapping around, all right? All right, so material is whatever you want um, in whatever color you want. Miss the garbage. And so we have two different shapes and um, I should say in sizes, really. Oh, we didn't pink this side either. Hold on, let's pink this side. I really don't like the name they gave these scissors. Pinking shears. Like, can you give it a different name? Okay. Just take all the fuzz off. And if we don't get this out of here, it's going to get all over our cotton. Okay. So now we need to get this just kind of bunched up. And then we're going to tie it around with the raffia and stick this grass stuff in here. Now, the grass stuff, like the green stuff that you can put on top, is like whatever you want, really. So I'm going to show you some options. And I don't have the green raffia, which I thought would be a really cool idea, but I need to go get some. So I have in our floral stash, which I bought this stuff because I really liked it for a different project, and then it didn't look good. So... I think it said grass on it. Mm, bush. It's just a bush of grass, I guess. That's all it says. Um, so, does this feel? Oh, the other one's over So it comes in like this really tall form, and it has like these really thick grass weeding looking pieces, which we don't use. I just will use all these. So I cut them all the way down at the root, like base of it. Um, take a bunch, however many you think you want. Um, so I have a bunch here that I have like divvied out already. So this is the long version, okay? So this is probably about like 13 inches long altogether. Just a small little bunch. And then what I like to do, I love my, my clothespins. I use them for everything. So I take my little clothespin and I put one um, down here towards the bottom. Let me just make sure... Alright, so then I'm going to take this and I'm basically going to go about like halfway and I'm going to cut the other side and then I'm just going to join them together. So it just creates like a little bit more in the bunch and then I just kind of mix them all around so that they're all combined. Alright, 
So I already have some that are cut. I was just showing you how to do that. I already have a few bunches here. I have some long strands. So now we're gonna take some raffia. Oh, before I do that, I wanna show you options. So I also have this little guy that I thought would have been cute, but I decided not to use it. And I'll tell you why. And he's stuck on the raffia, hold on. So this would be really cute to use because that almost looks like really good carrot greens, right? But if you can tell like there's this really distinguishing dark green stem in there and you can just really tell where like the points of the greens are and things like that. And I didn't want it to be so harsh looking. I wanted it to be really soft and subtle. So I decided against this one, but it's up to you what you use for your project, okay? So now let's get a nice piece of raffia out. Let's see if this is a nice one. Because sometimes like some of them are like this small. I want like a thicker one. All right, so one strand, that's all I use, one strand. And so let's, this is our example. So we'll put this guy here. Let's do the medium size guy. All right, so we're just gonna push down our stuffing to make sure it's in there and not poking through. We're gonna get our hot glue out, all right? We're gonna take one of these little bushel things and I like to kind of pull some of these a little higher, lower um, from the straight pieces just so that it doesn't look like they're all straight across. And we're gonna stick this right into that little hole that's there for the stuffing, all right? And here you can also, again, kind of fix this so that they're spread out a little bit. And what I like to do now, I'm going to do this facing you guys so you can see. So I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to put a real good size heaping of glue across the very top here on the fabric and then press down. Okay, right across the greens and on the fabric. So we're just going to let that set. Okay, a sec, and then we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing, ouch! That's why I was trying to let it sit so I don't burn myself. <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And I'll tell you guys, you can do these, like I said, no sew versions, but the reason why I really don't like to do the no sew versions is, well, two things. A, I get really nervous that glue, no matter what kind of glue you get, can still un come undone with the right amount of heat. So, and I know in some places in the world it can get crazy hot, other than in Massachusetts, <laughs> apparently, it's freezing. <laughs> Guys, I feel like I'm the state puff marshmallow guy today because I have like three layers on. Because it's kind of warm outside, but so that means the heat really doesn't want to kick on. So I'm freezing. I'm freezing, of course. All right, so we're just getting the fuzz off. All right, so that's pretty much sealed up. A, you sealed up the opening for the for the fill to not come out and you glued these little greens in, okay? So now let's take our raffia piece and we'll find like the midway point. That looks about great. So we're gonna put this underneath. And so what we wanna do is gather this up right at the seam here, okay? as much as you can try and hold that in one hand and if you can't then what you can do I, I tried this before and it does work too what you can do if you can't hold it again my clothes pins or if you have any kind of pin or or whatever um, you can get a clothes pin Pin that part together, really, so that you can work with two hands on the raffia. Um, it may not hold the whole thing, but it will hold a majority of it, so that way you're not struggling to kind of try and get it tied. Okay. Now this is the part where you want to make sure your raffia is down far enough where you want it to go. Okay. And if it is, then just kind of do a knot there. So we're just making a knot. 
A so it doesn't come undone so easily. And now what I like to do is also just put a little bit of glue there and we're gonna start wrapping this around. Ooh, this little strand came undone. So A, the glue will keep the raffia from moving upwards or wherever you don't want it to be, I should say. But just make sure that you're getting your raffia over that glue so you don't have like a big old glue dot. All right. And again, these are just really cute little versions of um, additional things that you can add to your wreaths or centerpieces uh, to give them that um, really personalized uh, touch and not usually things that you're going to find in the stores. I mean, the stores you can get like those styrofoam ones. They're wrapped with um, some kind of raffia usually or, or um, pipe cleaners, but these are really personalized um, to the core here. All right, and I'm going to make my, my tie go to the side really, so that way it's not front facing. So let me just play with that for a second. All right, and I'm sorry if I'm not getting to questions or anything like that for a sec. Let me just tie this off. Okay, so that's in a knot. And then you can leave this along, you can cut it, you can do whatever you want. Um, but I kind of like to leave it a little bit long. So that way it has like some character. Character, get it, character. <laughs> character. So, and that's the sew version. So they come in different sizes. Like I said, there's gonna be three different sizes to a bunch. And then, you know, if you buy these, then you can just cut these um, to whatever length you want too. So we'll do this one um, at another time, but I wanted to show you was the sew version, the no sew version, the no sew version. All right, hold on. We're going to get our little, um, I have feathers on here galore because when we were working with that the other night, there was feathers everywhere on my desk. So let me just get all the fuzz off of our fabric. All right, so now I have two different colored triangles, okay? So now we're going to do the no sew version. And let me just make sure we're in camera. Okay, good. So we're going to take these pins off um, slowly. So what you're going to want to do is fold these pieces in together. Um, like, like you're creating your own seam, basically. But you're just going to be gluing the seam. Okay. And I don't know that we'll stuff this one, but it'll just to show you that you can still make the carrot without sewing. You can do it glued version. And um, if you're doing it glued version, I like to work with little bits at a time. Uh, just because I find it's a little bit easier to manage. Versus you trying to glue the whole entire line at once. Okay, so just keep folding in your seam. And I will say I'm not the best at the no glue version. The no glue. <laughs> the no sew version, not the no glue. If we had no glue, then we'd be in trouble. The no sew version, because we do the sew version so much more. Oh, I just got my finger in it with a little bit of a bird. Come on, stay in there. That one was really bad. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Ouch. I would recommend if you're definitely going to do this with um, no sewing, you 
cut yourself a little bit bigger piece because this is just for like a quarter inch seam and definitely put some little finger protectors on unlike I don't have right now so I guess to that point um, if I give you guys a pattern for the no sew version I'll make the seam line bigger more manageable this side came out kind of crappy for sure we'll have to take our heat gun to that and unglue that we'll show you on the pretty side <laughs> so quarter inch for gluing is really not going to be that great but i figured again today we just do something real quick and easy let that piece dry before I burn my fingertips anymore again. The, the greatest part about these carrots is you can do them however you want. Absolutely. Great point. You absolutely can. Um, my inclination was I was just going to put a seam and um, do the very top like the like the sew version everyone um, has great ideas all the time all the time but that doesn't stop just because my idea is different doesn't mean you have to do something uh, the same you can do something different that's the best part about these things and so you would just come down here and glue the very bottom And then we would just need to cut this off and trim that. I want to trim this piece and trim this piece so that it's even. Now I did mess up on this side because I got my finger stuck right in the glue and it pulled the fabric out. Um, but you can absolutely do these now. So now that you can, now you can fill it once all the glue is set. This, this side is still a little tacky. I can feel it really hot. So you would just fill this up and the same thing, like Gail mentioned, we're, we're going to do the same thing to the top. You can just take your pinking shears here and come to the top and cut those like that at the top and then just bunch them up and basically I did this one this way so you could see what we did with this carrot um, so essentially what you're gonna end up with is the same thing like this and then you're gonna go ahead and fill this one with its little greens on top so this one's a little bit different because we didn't want to cut um, well, we don't want to cut into the seam, so we just left the seam on the t very top open. So hang on, so let me just push some in, leave some higher. So, and just combine them a little bit better. Hold on, let's pull this out. I feel like it's too, too even. I don't want everything too even. Let's just mix them together, pull some down, pull some up. Perfect. And now we're going to stick this into here. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to put some glue right across here. And then push that closed. And be careful with your fingers because with cotton, the glue can still come through and burn you. So just tread lightly when you're pushing that closed those two all right so you just got to be careful if you put too much glue it's going to get a little tough so now we can probably use this baby strand of, of um oh no that one's a little too thin that's a little cheesy let's get a thicker one let's get a better one here so on the 
orange with plaid version. Look, we can do the same thing here, guys. If you can't hold it, we're gonna pinch that and we're gonna try and get a lot of it in there with our uh, clip here. We're just gonna try and squeeze that in there. So see how we can just squeeze that in there and just kind of closes up for us a little bit better so that we can use two hands. You can use like a chip clip or um, what do you call those? They like those spring loaded um, clips almost. I don't know the name of them. They have like at the dollar store, like usually when you go to checkout, they have like a package and like all sorts of different colors. Okay. And these are great to use like if you have extra fabric sometimes laying around that you don't know what to do with because it doesn't take much fabric at all to do these. So I'm just making sure that's in the right place that I wanted it. And now I think what we're going to do is A, hold that little knot tie area to make a knot, I should say. Yes, here clips are good too. And um, I just don't know what they call. I don't know if I have an example of one in here. Don't look at my messy draw. It's all a mess in here. I don't have one over here. Oh yeah, I do. Oh, these white ones. I got a white one. They come in like pink, white, and red, and these little clippies. They're like spring action. These are really good to use too. Those you can get at the dollar store for sure. All right, so before I put any glue on the fabric, I'm just fixing my little bunch here so that it looks cute and not all distorted okay so I think I like that and now I'm going to add some glue okay so that this little guy doesn't keep running up the carrot and like making a muck and then this one is going to go this way. And we're going to hit that glue every time we wrap around. So everything just kind of stays double secured. So that nothing's going to go flying off. All right. We're just going to tie this one off. And voila! I have the biggest piece of glue on my thumb. So now this one is really cute because you can alternate what side you use this carrot on. So if you want it to show on one of them on the buffalo plaid side, you can. I gotta make sure I'm in screen. Um, or you can show it on the orange side. So it's totally up to you. But now you can have fuzzy or non fuzzy carrots, whatever you want. So, real quick, all you do is put some glue in. And like Gail said, you don't have to make a seam. You can just make one side all glue and then pink with the shears. Um, along the edges at top and bottom and sides. Um, this one doesn't really have a bottom, it's just sides and top. And then you can just tie it around after you stuff it. Or you can sew them like this, like we did, um, which is our just our preferred method. So we're gonna go ahead and tie these up after the live with uh, this fabric and then this fabric. Can you see that? Almost looks like, which way am I going? This way. Almost looks like couch material. That's what I think it is. It's like couch material. But you can make your carrots in all sorts of different sizes. So these are a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit bigger. Um, and then they'll come in like a cute little bunch. All right.
let me zoom you guys out because I think we're pretty much done. It was going to be a quick live today. All right. Well, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And um, I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Uh, do something great, even if it's just spending time with your family, because that is the best thing, if possible, if ever. Um, but I wish you guys stay safe. Have fun and stay creative. Kathy here from Santa Marta Designs. Don't forget to follow Don's page if you haven't. And have a great weekend. Bye.